It's April and we're in the home stretch of the Premier League and with that another chance to win $50,000. Hey, what's happening everyone? It's Jason, of course, with Winning Bets, and this is one of those free games that we play over on the NBC Sports Predictor app, where we can win $50,000 on match week number 32 in the Premier League. They'll give you five games. you got to give them the right result and score for all five of those games to take home that $50,000. If not, you can still compete for a guaranteed $1,000 prize if you can get the most points. Four points right for a result, 10 points right for the correct score, and I'm also going to give away $25. That's right. If you want to join that Winning Bets League, where you can get that information in this video description. Compete against your fellow Winning Bet supporters. It's easy. Whoever has the most points at the end of every single match week takes home $25. And again, if you need that league information, you can grab it from this video description. Let's take a look and see who won last week. It looks like we've, we've got Strasser, 69, if I've got that right. Strasser, 69 with 24 points. Just a really good, excellent entry right there. Two correct scores. They got that United-Leicester game. They also got that West Ham-Everton correct score, so good work by them. And then they got an initial four points by getting that Tottenham result where they were able to beat Newcastle. But that individual does not win $25. They win $100. You guys remember we had so many ties. We just kept rolling that $25 over each and every single week. It got to actually be a $100 prize. My man was the only winner. So he or she will take home $100. So hit me up on Twitter, drop me your PayPal information, and I'll send you $100. For everybody else, it's a new week. We've all got zero points. Good luck in taking my $25. But let's just jump into the action. We all want $50,000. So let's see if we can go ahead and win that. The first game here is Southampton versus Chelsea. Look, Southampton finally stopped that bleeding, right? Three-game losing streak. Just a little bit of a terrible slide right there. Well, they got a 1-1 draw against Leeds on the road. So not a terrible result right there. Meanwhile, Chelsea on the weekend, they had a second-half collapse. Go into halftime 0-0. Get a quick opening second half goal and then just completely fell apart and in that falling apart you had Erickson get a goal we all we all know the story with Erickson and obviously with the Euros the cardiac arrest so yeah once he got it I was sitting there watching and I was like well Chelsea's not going to get a second <laughs> like that emotion you could just feel it with that Brentford squad it, it was over once Erickson put the ball in the back of the net and made it 2-1 for this Chelsea team kind of a little bit of an awkward spot right sitting in third place not going to catch the leaders no way just no way they can catch the leaders not really going to get caught, I would say, by Arsenal and Tottenham because Chelsea's a good team. And I just don't see them going on that drastic, of, you know, of a losing streak. They're going to get results and going to get points. But that being said, Tottenham and Arsenal are right there. And they're keeping the pressure on Chelsea. It's only a five-point gap. You know, if, one, if Chelsea slips just the slightest, all of a sudden now they're in fourth place. And then when you get in fourth place, obviously you're now competing with the West Ham, you know, and the Manchester United. So Chelsea's comfortable, but boy, is it just a little bit of an awkward spot right there. And then the other thing you got to question with Chelsea is how much is it going to be impacted by this week's Champions League game? I'm recording this before their midweek game against Real Madrid, but how much is that going to impact their game? You know, this game against Southampton. We don't know the result, but either way, you know, they're either not going to get blown out by Real Madrid. They're also not going to blow out Real Madrid. So this will be a close, you know, tie going into the second leg. So that has to factor into it, right? That, you know, it's going to factor into it. So we'll see what happens in that leg. But uh, regardless, I think it's going to have some form of impact. If, if nothing else, it's just going to be squad rotation. We'll have to impact this game against Southampton. So with all that being said, with this game being at St. Mary's, with Southampton maybe getting a little bit of a mojo back, and, you know, they didn't get a loss. I think Chelsea's in a tough spot right here with a midweek game against Real Madrid. Very tough game against Real Madrid. I think Southampton can get a result. Give me a 1-1 draw at St. Mary's. 1-1 draw. All right, the next game here is Arsenal versus Brighton. Boy, what a nice bounce back spot here for Arsenal, right? Brighton has lost six of their last seven. Coming off a 0-0 game against Norwich. Like, you're not scoring against Norwich. Well, absolutely brutal. Arsenal did look bad against Crystal Palace. I mean, it looked really bad. I watched that game. I don't know what they were doing that second half. Just no kind of real drive and ambition to get forward. They were acting like the team that was out 2 nothing, right? And Lunch is just meaningless possession. No, you were down 2 nothing. You got to go and get some goals. And then to give up a third goal just on some sloppy defending on a three-on-one breakaway when you have defenders in position, just, 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 a, just a bad result by Arsenal, right? They've been on a good run. They've gotten themselves up in European football in terms of, you know, fighting for it. I don't, I'm not going to hold a lot of that result against them. We know how Palace has been good at home. That's again why I just say this is a nice bounce back spot for Arsenal. 
at home against a Brighton team that's just been full-on struggling. Arsenal's had the better hand in the recent head-to-heads. They've won two of the last three head-to-heads. The most recent was a 0-0 draw, but in those two wins, Arsenal was able to keep clean sheet in both of those wins. I think you're going to get more of that. I think you're going to get an Arsenal win at home. Again, a very nice bounce back spot against an opponent that is full on struggling, not even scoring against Norwich. Yeah, you're struggling if you're not scoring against Norwich. Give me that Arsenal win. Give me that Arsenal clean sheet. I'll take an Arsenal 2-1 win at home. Sorry, I meant 2-0. 2-0, not 2-1. 2-0. 2-0 win at home there for Arsenal. All right, then we move it over here to Aston Villa versus Tottenham. Look, Tottenham looked like they won fourth place, right? And you got a little bit of an Arsenal slip up right there. And Tottenham's right there in fourth place. They're both level on points. Arsenal does have a game in hand, but Tottenham is right there. Tottenham obviously looks like the better of the two teams right now. Obviously coming off a 5-1 win up against Newcastle. Tottenham's winners of four of their last five overall doing really good. They're catching an opponent that is struggling. Villa with three straight losses. They lost to West Ham. They lost to Arsenal. They also lost to Wolves. I think three defensive or three clubs that are really good defensive and Villa was unable to get results in all three of those and losing those games. So you got a Tottenham team that's surging, catching a, a good team I think in Villa but catching them I think at an absolute right time Villa will score though they're at home they can score Tottenham's got Eric Dyer as a center back they can get exposed they got some really good obviously offensive pieces there at Villa with Coutinho and and Watkins and Ings can also come in there so I like the players that Villa has I like them at home I think they can get a goal but I think Tottenham can, can just continues this really good run they're on. They're only focusing on the Premier League, no European competition. Give me a Tottenham win. I think Tottenham pulls out a 2-1 win. Give me a 2-1 win for Spurs. All right, so the next one here is Norwich versus Burnley. How about the game of the week? Is this the game of the week? Norwich versus Burnley, 20th place Norwich up against 19th place Burnley. I mean, if you're looking at these two clubs, Burnley's like the only one that realistically has a chance to stay up, right? Norwich would have to go on some absurd run and <laughs> they don't have that in them. Everybody sit here knows it. But Burnley, they do have a realistic shot. It's not a gimme. It's not a gimme. They've been full on struggling this year, but they do have a chance to possibly go ahead and stay up. Reverse fixture was 0-0. Before that, Burnley got a 2-0 win. Give me Sean Dice. Yeah, give me the guy on the thumbnail. Give me Sean Dice, an absolute must win, big spot. I don't care if it's on the road. This is it. This is your Premier League life. A draw really doesn't do you all that good. You've got to get points. At this point, like, yeah, uh, certainly a loss hurts you, but I'd rather suffer a loss and trying to go for a defeat than just sit there and get a meaningless one point that really doesn't do you all that good. You've got to start catching Everton. You've got to start catching Everton. They've got games in hand. Yeah, this is a must-win spot. Absolutely big spot. Give me Sean Dice. Give me Burnley. I like Burnley on the clean sheet. Norwich is just not scoring. I don't care. And I love Burnley's defense. There's an opportunity here for Burnley to go up 1-0 and shut it down and play defensive or to do that at 2-0. But I think Burnley's just going to keep going in an absolute must-win big spot. They'll pull the reins back at some point, but not before they have three goals. I like Burnley in this game, and I like Burnley on the 3-0 win. Burnley 3-0. And then the next game here is Manchester City versus Liverpool. Okay, okay, this is the game of the week. Okay, game of the week right here. Liverpool City, get your popcorn ready. This one is going to be awesome. First place for second place with a win by either side. I think the race is over. I think this is it. This is it. Neither of these two teams lose or draw a whole hell of a lot. So if one of these teams can get the three points, it's probably going to be enough to get them up there. I know if Liverpool gets the three points, they only have a two-point lead. If City gets the win, they only have a four-point lead. But these two teams just don't lose. They don't draw. This is a massive, massive three points. The recent head-to-heads, you've got a draw. you got a 4-1 City win. You've got another draw. You got a 4 0 City win, and then you got a 3 1 win there in Liverpool. That's the most recent head to heads over the last two seasons and the reverse fixture. The reverse fixture was that 2 2 draw. Look, I would just say go with your gut here. Just go with your gut. I could see a low scoring game. I could see a high scoring game. I could see either one of these two teams winning draw. I'd say just absolutely go with your gut because that is what I do. I think this is an absolute coin flip. Cannot wait. Bonafide game of the week. Don't miss it. Get your popcorn ready. I did City 2-1 win. I did City 2-1 win. It's at the Etihad. That's kind of why I leaned it. They've had the better hand in the head to, in the recent head-to-heads with a 4-0 and a 4-1 win. Okay, give me City on that 2-1 win. All right, so there you have it. That's how I'm competing for a chance to win $50,000 this week on the NBC Sports Predictor app every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. 
Eastern Time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Matt and I, we get on my YouTube channel here, we get on YouTube Live, and we'll talk about all 10 of these Premier League games, and we'll give you bets for all 10 games. So if you're interested in placing any real sports bets on any of these five games or the other five games this week in the Premier League, come back and check out this ep- this week's episode of Between the Posts. It'll go off live at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursday afternoon. Enjoy that show. Let's cash some bets, and let's come on back here next week and compete for another chance to win $50,000. Good luck with your picks, everybody. That was a lot of fun. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and good luck with your picks. If you're interested in placing real sports bets, then check out my latest daily free sports betting video in the bottom right corner. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next contest.